recorded live from the mats of Radical MMA in New York City, the Martial Culture Podcast. Your source for in-depth combat sports and martial arts insights with, with Coach, Coach Ray Dreyfus, Dreyfus and, and Matt Peters. Peters. Ring the bell and let's get, get it, it on. Just when you thought you could get rid of us, we're back. It's been a couple weeks. It has. Uh, lots of things have happened in the last couple of weeks, and we're going to do our best to cover everything in 45 minutes. Start the clock. Go, Renee. How are you? <clears throat> I'm good. I'm great, actually. That's great. I like when people say I'm great. Great. I'm drained. It's been a long day today. I'm trying to muster the, the energy to be entertaining. Well, you were sick for a while, and uh, we, that's why we missed uh, last week, so it's good. You, Apologies. you have color back in your cheeks. Yeah. And slap myself today. Stay oh, awake. I can do that. Yeah. No, you're you're a trained <laughs> professional, and your slaps are probably serious. I've only slapped the, bass, in the, the face bass once. Rooting slap. Actually, you know, it's a move we call it the Brazilian slap. You know, sometimes you like pop pop. And actually, in the last fight, in um, in uh, in um, uh, that last um, you know, the la- the was it the big the one we just watched um. You Romero? Yeah, Romero and uh, Whitaker. The one before that, the, the, uh, there was the idiot with the big slap. <laughs> the, um, Dos, Dos Anjos and um, – and, uh, um, Dos Anjos and um, – The other guy. Yeah, the other guy. The guy that, <laughs> that nobody cares about. Him. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yeah, Cody Covington, right. Cody hey. Co- yeah, right. So the Brazilians have this like Wah-bah! slap that they do, you know? Yeah. And it, actually it's interesting because it comes like from a more street perspective. Now MMA guys wear gloves, but when you were doing Valley Tudo old days – there were no gloves, and a lot of people uh, don't understand how to punch bare knuckle, or they they see the danger that if they punch closed fist at a certain point, that um, they're going to break their hand. So instead, they they slap you. And uh, Bass Rutten was an old school guy. He used to compete in a thing called Pancras, yeah. and he was the master of the, the knockout slap. And I mean, he slap people but really knocked them out, yeah. right? Yeah. So you know, the slap can be serious. Hit him in the right spot. Hit the button. <laughs> the button on the Whoops. head. And, and it's embarrassing too. So, you know, nobody I'm wants to sure. get slapped. Hurts your ego. But Bass Rutten's got hands like a bear. So he does. He does. He, he could do anything with his hands and it'd probably hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what man. that means. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he could do a lot of things with the hands and hurt. <laughs> but it's nice to see, even in modern MMA, like uh, interesting different strikes. Uh, and the slap for real is it's, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, Brock Lesnar used to do like that bear club. You know, like, bah, you know, kind of slap where he wouldn't even – I mean, I guess he had his hand closed, but it was more like, you know, like no technique kind of clothesline thing. <laughs> he was just going mental. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but it worked. It worked already good tour. How I can hurt somebody. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, quick – one thing I want to mention real quick, and I want to give as much airtime to this person as their UFC career, CM Punk, <laughs> uh, 0-2, uh, would – Disappointing. Okay, you know what? Okay, so everybody's riding on the like beat CM Punk when he's down train. And yes, he's, you know, not so skilled. And yes, um, that was not a fight that people should pay for on a pay per view. On the main card, yeah. On the main sure. card. There's no way. Uh, it shouldn't be even be. Even it, his, his opponent wasn't. No, wasn't even no, up there. No. Um, it, it should that was supposed. He, 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 you know, it's it's kind of like I feel like he's a victim of circumstance, and this happens with some people who transition from legitimate sports as well. They're pinnacle in judo, like um, Ronda Rousey. Um, Kayla Harrison is is going through the same thing. She's going to make her MMA debut. They're pinnacle in one sport, so they can't get low level fights. They can't. You can't be mm-hmm. Ronda Rousey and and. Um, I mean, she did actually. She did have an amateur fight, but but it was, as I understand, it was hard for her to fight find opponents. You know, when you're the judo world champion or Brazilian jiu jitsu world champion, or you're just some famous pro wrestler guy, you know, you have a name, and people aren't going to fight you on some local Joe Schmo amateur show. And I, I believe Ronda Rousey only had like you know a couple, maybe one amateur fight, and then she went pro. And um, a good example of that is Marcelo Garcia in, in, in Jiu Jitsu, where he went pro right away, no amateur. And you know he was he was stuck in the in a deep end of the pool, and that, that's kind of not fair. And CM Punk is is going through the same thing, uh, as did Brawley Estima, um, a couple of the Jiu Jitsu guys. That they they get thrown into the pro level when they shouldn't be. They I mean he should be an amateur somewhere. And you know what? Um, I, he earned my respect. He was terrible. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say it. Let's just say it. He was not good, but he tried his best. And man, there were like three or four times where he could have quit in that fight and he did not quit. And to me, that's what it's about. And he challenged himself. And okay, when, doesn't matter if he won, doesn't matter if he lost. He rose to that challenge and he had no quit in him and he earned my respect. 
hundred percent. Now, does he have technically a long way to go? Yeah, for sure. But um, but uh, it was nice to see someone dis- display a real heart. Now, does he belong there? No. Um, but at the same time, uh, I, I it, with his name, I guess he couldn't really go anywhere else. You know. What do you think about uh, Dana White's comments about his opponent, Mike Jackson? Did you hear what he said? I don't know what he said. So Dana White uh, is he said that two. Two fighters' careers ended that night, and it was CM Punk and Mike Jackson. Oh, that's terrible. Because Jackson Cause he couldn't finish it. He couldn't finish it. Well, you know, he had um, – I don't know about that. You know, um, again, you're dealing with a guy with one, you know, uh, one professional fight, and he lost. Like um, the, the Mike Jackson had the one professional fight, which he lost before. So he was just thrown in a stage. Um, you know, forget about the opponent, the the the, 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 the crowd, the stage. It's, it's – um, there's ex- it's a competition experience is a big deal. It has nothing to do with skill. It has to do with being able to um, put your game on, be- do your A game, be in the zone under tremendous pressure and distraction and all that stuff. And fighting in a huge arena is hard. It's just hard regardless of who's standing in front of you. You mm-hmm. could be fighting a tomato can. It's still intimidating and hard. And uh, I think that's a little rough. But yeah, they were both were not ready for prime time. So – let him go back to the drawing board, stick in the lower shows for a little bit, and mm. maybe maybe he'll come back and and do better. I mean, the guy's not a bad boxer; he's a, you know, he's fine. You All know, right. yeah, he's fine. You know, um, he's just you know, and in, in, in he's in a context where he shouldn't be in. You know, like it's like, okay, you played. You know, I was I say this to to some people who come from certain martial arts. You know that they, I said you played little league, and there's nothing wrong with little league baseball. That that's great, but you can't jump from little league to the major leagues. There's some steps in between that you have to go through. Now, you've played Little League, and now you want to go to the major leagues? Mm. There's some things we have to do in the middle first. Mm. And that's not to discredit what you did before, but um, there's a big difference between, you know, T-ball and the Little League and, you know, <laughs> standing in front of, uh, sure. you know, um, I don't know, famous baseball player, you know, throwing pitches at 90 miles an hour at you. So there's a huge difference. the WWE is the Little League of uh, the fighting world. <laughs> Just <laughs> didn't see this word. No. <laughs> no, but I Send mean. Send your comments to no, me. I was, talking, I was talking about Mike, uh, the Mike, Mike yeah. Jackson guy. No, no, WD is fake. So it's not even Little League. Oh, it's, even worse. It's not even Little League. It's not fighting. <laughs> it's it's not fighting. It is not fighting. Like that's. Has CM Punk ever had a fight that was not in? I mean, I don't know his career. No, no, no. He's never, no, he no, went he's right never had a fight. WWE yeah, to, right. It's, 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 it's right. He's like in a situation where he shouldn't be. In. He doesn't look good when he fights either. No, he does not. He has. Uh, he's, he's just inexperienced now, you know. And he he's trying to be a grappler, grappler centric fighter, but he he um he failed he failed in the shots. He he needs to work on his wrestling mm-hmm. and his in his commit to commitment. His wrestling. No, no commitment to the shot. No, I mean if you let's say technically what he's doing wrong. I mean, you can pick out exactly what he's doing wrong. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, uh, he's also, I mean, he's like 37 or something. Yeah. You know, he's older. He's old to be starting a new career. Right, right. And you just don't have that same fast twitch muscles. That yeah. It's hard to be 37 year old guy and just starting something. I'm not saying he can't do it. I cornered a, uh, amateur MMA fight, um, where the opponent, uh, was 30 years old. And the person I was cornering was not my student, but I was asked to help out. And I did coach him for a few weeks beforehand. Uh, uh, actually a little longer than that, but he was 60 years old. Uh, and he fought and he lost, but he had made a great showing because it was his life's dream mm-hmm. to, to be in an MMA fight. And, and he made a great showing. He did great. He didn't get hurt. Um, he, he, he gave up 30 years and you know what? More power to him. And, and, um, it just happened that that guy was, was better. But I, I think, you know, following your dreams and going that – like there's too many haters in the world. You know, I'm not going to hate on CM Punk or his, his opponent. He is living his dream to test himself. He was just put in a situation that is not the best situation and he should be at the amateurs or, you know, and, and working his way up. And maybe maybe he doesn't make it to the pros, you know, but that would be his quality fighter. But he could still live that dream. There are a lot of guys out there who can't be Brock Lesnar, can't be, you know, TJ Dillashaw, can't be – um, meet you, Stipe Miocic or whatever, um, but they can certainly walk the martial path and challenge himself. And I think mm-hmm. that's why CM Punk does it. I mean, the guy has like supposedly a lot of money already. Like, what's he doing it for? Mm-hmm. He's doing it to t- challenge himself. Like, who, who, who would in their right mind want to step into the ring and get their head bashed in? Like, you, you have to have some. It has to be something more than money. And you know, everybody out there, uh, I have a lot of students who will n- never step into the, you know, the octagon at the pro level. But does that mean their journey is any less worthwhile? No way. Um, hey, you know what? I give this guy credit and he didn't quit. I've seen guys who 
who broke under less pressure than he did, you know, and mm-hmm. he didn't break. He didn't quit. Good for him. You know, yeah. that's like, let's, let's stop hating on the guy. And he was in a, in a kind of a bad situation. Yeah. Back but, to the drawing board. Yeah, 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 Good for yeah, him. Yeah. So, um, nice transition to somebody that, that did break and did quit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh man, Ronda You're, Rousey! You tell you say I mean that's terrible. That Ronda country, Rousey right? being inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. Uh, I object. <laughs> I object. No, you that's not. She should be there. What do you mean? She fought for like two years. No, but she created the women's division. They before that put her in she, like the honorable mentions. Like she <laughs> she gets like a, a wing of the the building or something. No, she's, she's in the like, modern wing where she's in the modern wing. You know that because the, the, there's the hall of famers from the old. Yeah, time. But she shouldn't be in the hall of fame at all. She should be in like the these people get did good things to like to like help the <laughs> the sport, but she shouldn't be. Well, you know, Bass Rutten is is in it and only had one UFC fight. Bass Rutten. No, had one UFC fight. He only had one fight. So in the UFC. So hmm, that's a little tough to put him in the Hall of Fame if he only had one fight. But he was. He's a pioneer. And he, he kind of like had a personality. Okay. And- so the Hall of Fame is not the Hall of Fame. So when I'm thinking – so maybe the UFC Hall of Fame is <laughs> it's not – a little different. Yeah, not yeah. like I don't, the, I don't the football know what, Hall of Yeah, I don't know what the football Hall of Fame is. But significant pe- – people who significantly contributed to the sport. So probably like the, the Zufas are in there or something. Oh, they should be. Absolutely. Oh, 100%. And so should Dana White. Absolutely. I think he should be in there too. All right. So and, and the same with um, the, the, the matchmaker. Um, so that's the time. thing. So it, it, maybe it's not, it's not mixed martial arts Hall of Fame, people that have done well in fighting. It's people that helped – the UFC, yeah, so it's helped the sport Hall grow, right? Right? No, absolutely. Right, no, Fine. because she can be in it. No, because she oh. <laughs> created women's MMA. I mean, before that, there was no high level women's MMA on, a, on in the UFC. I mean, Strike Force had a women's division, but nobody's watching Strike Force. When yeah. she came in, she became the most popular fighter in the UFC, and she was a woman. So they created her division, then they created the one fifteen, and then they have this and this, and, and she made lives, careers for hundreds of women. That that's a that's a huge contribution, huge. Right. <laughs> that that you know, putting aside her personality or you know how she broke and failed, or <laughs> but you know, like it, it's not it's not necessarily like the she's the best fighter ever. Like I don't think that's what they're getting at. You know, if if if, if we're the best fighter ever, no, she she was really good for a while, but she's only three years, only three years. Yeah, you can't be in the Hall of Fame if you know you know. Well, like like I said, Bass Rutten's there, but if you're judging on people who had. Longevity and you know champions like Chuck Liddell or you know Machida even for a long time you know these guys were in there you know taking the best and 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 beating them but when Ronda Rousey came in you know she was far and ahead of all her opponents in terms of skill and they evolved yeah and and she didn't you know she she got stuck with a terrible trainer she didn't evolve the way she needed to mm-hmm. she was stagnating. And they caught up, and they beat the snot out of her. So hey, you're, you know. good, you're full of good transitions today about mm-hmm. uh, her opponents evolving. Mm-hmm. Holly Holm put on a, a good show. Good show, yeah. But yeah, yeah. her opponent wasn't up there either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, um, That's the tricky part. Like, where are the good fighters? Yeah, no, no. Where no. have the, the cowboys gone? I don't know that old song. Yeah, I don't know that song. Where have all the good men gone? And where? Sounds I like need a nice a hero. song. Oh, <laughs> I know that song. Yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the women's division obviously needs more bodies. Yeah. Um, and yeah. there's a lot of fight clubs that are building, and then they can pull from them yeah, and, yeah, and things like that. But um, the women, like we said in another podcast, the women's division is is still in transition and evolving. It it still has fighters who are more one dimensional than multi dimensional. And what you saw with the Holly Holm fight was a person who took time to not stagnate, to work on a grappling game because she's originally a striker, to work on a grappling game and take it to a striker who was more one-dimensional. And her opponent was a very good tie boxer. Megan Anderson. Yeah, Megan Anderson. That girl is good. And she had reach too. And she – honestly, I think she's a better striker than Holly Holm. And Holly Holm's like, OK, well, I'm not going to make it a striking match. I'm going to take you down. And I'm going to show you what jiu-jitsu is all about. Mm-hmm. And this girl's like, crap. <laughs> you know, but, but Holly Holm was not known for that. And she evolved. She transitioned. She grew. She's growing into a, a multi-skilled fighter. She always was trying to be. And, and I respect that. You know, she, uh, she got her, I believe her purple belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and she's working on her takedowns. Her takedowns look pretty good. And her side control was very good. Her positional dominance was good. You know, she took it to the girl and the girl was not ready to fight in that milieu. And, you know, when you're dealing with a really good striker, you better know how to grapple, otherwise you're in trouble. 
you yeah. know, um, and look at RDA and, and Colby Covington. Colby Covington had great grappling, great striking. RDA had good striking but a little predictable and uh, – but great, great fighter. I'm not trying to talk bad about him because he's, he's like, I really like him. But he's a little bit predictable, you know, and Covington is like, you're not going to be able to take me down. And I'm going to do lots of things to you and you are not going to be able to do your thing to him. And I cannot stand Colby Covington's attitude. He's like another Chael Sonny's, but it's worse. <laughs> I cannot stand it. But when you're dealing with a guy who's a great wrestler and a very good striker and unpredictable and you're dealing with a guy who is a little less of a grappler, a strike, uh, I mean a takedown artist, right? A little less skilled in takedowns, definitely better skilled on ground, but a little less skilled in takedowns. And a little predictable in striking, you're gonna have trouble, and mm-hmm. and that's what happened. But you know, um, I want to kind of talk about. Um, well, you're gonna you wanted to mention uh, Bisping, but I want to talk about like stagnation as it applies to these fighters. And a stagnation, a lot of guys training out there, they might be like, wow, I'm not getting better. How do I get better? Or people who want to um, feel like they're, you know, they're frustrated in in their in their training, whether it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling or MMA or whatever, Judo. You know, when you're like. What happens when you're Ronda Rousey in the gym, meaning you were the top dog and all these little guys were coming up and you're just smoking them and then suddenly they're biting at your heels, biting at your heels, and then they're eating you alive. And you're like, what happened? I, I didn't get better. Why? But anyway, it's just something I want to touch on and because it's very relevant to Holly Holm. Her evolution is really going well. She has a long way to go, but she's doing great. Ronda Rousey, you know, that's why she quit. She wasn't evolving. And people were evolving to, 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 to defeat her. Yeah. And then we talked about RDA, but you know, the few, few weeks ago, we missed it, uh, unfortunately, but, uh, Damian Maya, Damian Maya's last four fights have been the same exact fight. <laughs> the same exact fight, meaning I can't take the down, guy down and I can't strike very well. Oh shoot. I'm dead. And he lost to Kamaru Usman, who's not like, you know, I mean, he's good. He's got a lot of significant wins and, you know, he's definitely good, but he's not like the best of the best of the best. And although he's got a quite, quite a long win streak now, but, um, you know, but it's, forget him. Every single one of Damian Maia's last fights were identical fight. I mean, dude, you're stagnating. You're not growing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, people are going to come up and they're going to catch you. And that's something you have to, if you're in the martial arts, you have to grow. You have to move forward. You have to constantly problem solve and, 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 and not, you know, stagnate. And, um, and the problem is that fighters, when they stop evolving, you know, people catch up and start smoking them. Mm-hmm. That's the name of the game. It's an arms race. And I think that's why Bisping quit too. You know, you wanted to mention Bisping a little bit. But uh, so what was your take on him retiring? Good riddance. <laughs> I feel like I wish it would, he wouldn't even retire um, the way he did. I, I think one more fight. You wanted him to I do one more. Who would you want fight. him to fight if he fought once more? Gosh, I don't even know. Just GSP. GSP. Oh, no, GSP, GSP, again? GSP. Yeah, 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 again? Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would like to see him fight um, – like Anderson Silva again. Really? Yeah, because that was like a controversial one, you know? Anyway, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Who's but, the guy that took his eye? Oh, right. Well, yeah. What, what, <laughs> I don't know. That's that such happened, a rude right? thing yeah. to say. I apologize. That's terrible. <laughs> you are an awful person. <laughs> I'm in a bad mood today, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, I think GSP. Put him against um, that Chinese fighter. I gouged the, the other guy. So he'll, 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 Bisping will have it. He'll match up and play by <laughs> <laughs> You know, Bisbing has a podcast they record in New York City. You told me you hated yeah. it. You hate it, right? No, I hate Sean, Sonnen's podcast. Oh, Sonnen's podcast. Oh. Bisbing's is okay. Bisbing is actually um, – I he's, can't stand the guy, but as a commentator, as a fight he's commentator, very no, he's, he, he, he makes a good – he has a good TV presence. Yeah. He'll, you do, know, he'll do well in this post-career. He's already doing well. Yeah, no, and um, I, I don't really listen to the, the pre-fight or the post-fight commentary, but whenever I catch it and I see him there, I, I feel he he's professional – he is uh, has uh, good commentary. You know, mm-hmm. he's doing a good job. I think majority of his personality was a show. Just because you think he, so? Yeah, I do. I don't think, think so. so. I don't do? think so. I think he's a, he's a he's a tough you know you know street a kid. No, I don't hooligan, but he's a tough street kid. And you know, it's yeah. like that get whether it's New York ghetto or London ghetto or wherever. You know, you got that mentality where like. Dude, I, I gotta show you my machismo. I gotta show you my stuff. I gotta like you're gonna talk to me. I'm gonna talk to you back. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's necessarily positive, but you know, the Diaz brothers have it. I think he has it. Um, yeah. You know, like you get a lot of fighters who who they come from the rough part of town, and that's that's just who they are a little bit. You know, yeah. um, I, I don't I don't con- I'm not a fan of it, but I do understand it. 
You sure. know, um, you give a rough side of town, you can be a little bit rough. But yeah, yeah, definitely, probably um, amplified it. Amplified it, right? Right. You probably amplified it too, yeah. especially in the the, the pre fight talk. So how could have Bisbing not stagnated and continued to fight for maybe another five couple of years? You know, you know, actually, Bisbing was a guy who who evolved a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, he started out as a striker, had no grappling whatsoever. By the end of his career, he's really quite an excellent takedown artist in MMA and had some pretty good jiu-jitsu. I remember watching him coach one of the Ultimate Fighters. I'm like, wow, this guy's a good coach. He really knows what he's talking about. And and his his cues is something I would have said or something I sometimes I things I wouldn't think of. And I'm like, wow, that's really good. Um he was a really, really knowledgeable fighter and um had some good things. But I think actually where he needed to evolve was not in the grappling or in the um the jiu-jitsu in his takedowns or whatever. I think he needed to evolve into striking. He's kind of like, yeah, this is how I strike. It's been working me for 25 years. And, you know, he took a lot of damage. And his hands are – like you have to find a different style. And that is really a lot of what's going on in MMA today is the striking game is completely changing. You know, it's 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 not – if you come in like that old school Muay Thai, hmm, you know, you're going to have problems. You have to be that TJ Dillashaw guy now. You have to switch stances. You have to be – the look at um, uh, Israel Adesanya coming up. Look at um, – Oh, that crazy skinny white kid. Uh, the, um, what's his name? The, the Irish kid with the hair. Oh, what's his name? Oh, shoot. I forgot his the name. The flipper guy? No, the, no, the guy who broke okay. his leg in the fight, but he uh, recently – oh, he's really good. Uh, he's really skinny and his tattoos are always like a, kind of a new Conor McGregor-ish guy. Hmm. Um, yeah. I forgot his name. Anyway, I it'll come to me in a second, but uh, but he's good. And then also you have Zabit um, who we just saw. Oh, my God. These guys are like – they, they, this is the new game. It's the new generation. Like this old stuff, this has got to go. You're 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 playing dominoes, and we're in 3D chess. You know, uh, you know, and 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 the striking is evolving, and he's kind of doing his own thing, and you know, and and that's a, that's it's a generational change, and and sometimes, and I struggle with this too. You know, you know, you know, you're an old guy. You've been doing it a certain way all your life, and then you got to go like, hmm. yeah, you know what. Time to learn something new. Put that on the shelf. This has been working me for 10 years, but you know what? Maybe I got to stop doing that and do this. Mm-hmm. And that's a hard thing, especially for older fighters, you know? And, and, and I struggle with it too. I'm like, hey, this has been working for me forever. So I'm going to keep doing it even when there's a better option. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and you have to evolve. Now, this comes back to what I was saying is like, um, you know, uh, when, when do you know you're not evolving? And it's, a student came up, this student came up to me about a week ago, right? And, um, and said, Renee, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I'm getting better. I think I'm like, you know, I'm just spinning my wheels. I'm stagnating. Everybody's beating me. And I want to say, I said to him, there's two situations. There's stagnation, real stagnation, and then there's false stagnation. And what do I mean by false stagnation is that, and your teacher knows this, when you, it, just because people are kicking the snot out of you every day in the academy doesn't mean you're not getting better. So sometimes you're in the academy and your peers are getting better at the same rate you are. So you can't judge your progress. And then suddenly you take a trip and you go to another school and you're like, oh, my God, I'm Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what? what? I thought I was like, you know, Mr. Ed, <laughs> you know, Gomer Pyle, you know. Oh, I'm Bruce Lee. Wow, that's amazing. Because, you know, people also are evolving and getting used to you. That's one. The other thing is sometimes, especially when you learn new techniques. You actually get a little worse because if you think about moves, they're like little jigsaw puzzle pieces. Now you got to – you learn a new piece. So I teach you this new move. And you're like, hmm, how does this piece fit in with the overall puzzle that I'm trying to build over here? I don't really know. So your body gets a little bit kind of confused. And then, yes, you don't have this upward trajectory. So let's let's think of a line going upward you know, at an angle, you know, at a 45 degree. Boom. That's you're getting better. It doesn't really work like that. It goes up and then it plateaus flat. But that seems like stagnation. But what that is is you're getting the fuel ready to get another jump upwards. So it's like this zig Z line that goes like this, like up, flat, up, flat, up, flat. And that flat is not stagnation even though it feels like it. But what it is is you're trying to put together the new stuff that you're doing. And mm-hmm. when you do, you get better. Um, but – for a short time, you kind of get feels like you're getting worse. So that's it. And and I was saying, like, I know you're doing everything right. You're just putting some stuff together. Let me tell you, in two, three weeks, maybe a month, you'll start feeling 
much more confident. Even just yet, like you asked me a few weeks ago, even just t- today, I was like, see, see what I mean? You know, you're, you're, you're feeling better, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I think I see what you mean. Yeah. You know, the synapses and, are connected. Yeah, and exactly. Clicks. And, and neurologically, that's exactly what it is. Because what you, when we talk about technique, what is it? It's a wiring of your brain. Mm-hmm. And every time you learn something, your brain has to rewire a certain way. And they're, they're, what do you want to call it, engrams or neurological programming, whatever you want to use the word. There's some way your brain wires for physical tasks or even mental tasks too. You know, this is, this is not just martial arts. This is everything in life. Mm-hmm. So in that rewiring phase, things get a little wonky and confusing because your brain is trying to reorient itself, redraw patterns and reinforce new things. So of course you can be a little, you know, kind of, well, what am I doing? You know, mm-hmm. and then your partner who wants to kick the crap out of you takes advantage of that and kicks the crap out of you. You know, <laughs> now that's false stagnation. So what you do is when you feel stagnant, you go to your coach and you say, "Am I am I getting better? Or I'm not." And he's like, "No, no, you're doing fine." Then you know you're good. But then there's that other time where he says, "No, you suck." Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you suck. You, you know, and then this is the problem with Ronda Rousey, who he ate. You know, her coach never said, "Look, you need to work on this." He was like, "Oh, you're the best. Your striking's the best." Of course, he's a terrible coach. He probably doesn't know what you know. The guy that striking coach she had was just garbage but you know at the same time your coaches say look no you know you need to work on these things and he has to be dead honest with you and this is the time where he was and you know sometimes coaches aren't honest with with them so i would say this if he says hey yeah we got some struggles here like i had again a conversation with a student yesterday and he's having a problem with one position i'm like yes this you're not good at this move so let's take some time let's work it now how do you get out of that rut because sometimes we do fall in that rut. Ronda Rousey fell in that rut. Um, like I said, um, there are a lot of fighters. We can, can you think of any other fighter who, you know, like got into a rut and just couldn't get out? I, it's not coming to me right now, but there are a few, you know? I would say RD is not in a rut, but he's kind of like, you know, Damian Maya is totally in a rut. I mean, completely, utterly, he is not evolved. And I love Damian Maya. Yeah. Damian Maya, Master Professor Damian Maya, this is not trash. Like, you are one of my heroes. But at the same time, the last four fights looking identical with the identical problems over and over again, you know, you got to you gotta change something. You got to evolve in a new way. Otherwise, you got to hang the gloves up. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the Tyrone Woodley fight, the um, this Kamara Wisman fight, and then the, the, the four other fights before that. And you know what? You go back to his old days against when he's fighting Anderson Silva, the same thing. If you can't take you down, he's screwed. And in his wrestling is always has mistakes. Now, if he gets that single and he locks up your body, he gets it. But the thing is when he can't lock you up, his hips are too far back and he keeps making the same mistake over and over again. And, and, and over and over, every single fight, the same mistake. He doesn't get his hips in for the shot. Can't get the shot. Then he gets tired. Then he can't, he's not as good, a good striker. And then he gets picked apart. And then he's tired because he keeps shooting. And he gets picked apart more. And he gets tired and he keeps shooting. Gets picked apart more. Bop, 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 bop. And then Colby, you know, Colby Covington makes you look like an idiot in front of your hometown crowd. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> and he uses to step up to the I next level. Think he needs to hire a, a new coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, coach Renee. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm sure he has some good coaches. But at the same time, it's like, you know, what do you do when you fall into that rut? And I want to. This is a, a really interesting quote. You know, um, let me let me pull it up here. Um, and. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah. All right. It goes, my mind rebels at stagnation. Give me problems. Give me work. Give me the most abstruse analysis and proper atmosphere. And, um, and then I can, I can grow. I forgot the exact quote, but, um, it, that is it. My mind rebels at stagnation. So what you have to do is when you feel like you're in that rut, you have to become Sherlock Holmes. That was a, it was like a Sherlock Holmes quote. You know, you have to be a scientist and say, what exactly is going on? And drill down to the problem. Where am I losing it? And a good way to do that is look at video. So if you guys out there are having problems at a certain position, film yourself. Then go and say, where, where, did I, where did I go wrong here? And problem solve. Become Sherlock Holmes. And you have to learn new stuff. You have, maybe you have to change it up and get a new coach. You know, um, uh, Maybe it's time to um, add new pieces to your puzzle. Uh, I'll tell you, at a certain point, I had real trouble getting out of one move. This one move, I could not. So what happens is, of course, I asked my instructor for help, but I, I wound up finding every in BJJ instructional on that move that I could find. And I watched every single one and became a master of understanding every, every element of that position. And I finally, on my own, I mean, with help with other people, but I wound up crawling myself out of that, that hole of like being stuck in there and not knowing what to do. And I created a, a, a way for an answer. 
So you got to be Sherlock Holmes mm-hmm. and you got to problem solve and you have to go, what the hell's going on here? Why am I, why is this? Especially if the same thing like Damien Maya happens over and over and over again. But why is it taking so long for anybody to point this out? Does he not know that I don't this know. is that's happening? A, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's a great question because like it's the same thing. I mean, look at his old fight with Rory McDonald. It's the same thing. You know, like years ago, and the Kobe Covington, same same problem. I mean, he's a little better at the takedowns, but same thing. Can't take him out. And he's shooting incorrectly, so that's it. And then, of course, his striking is a little like not great. And he improved though a lot. Like his striking has improved, so he's going forward. But the real problem is, you know, he has to he has to hire. You know, you have to seek out some experts. And sometimes the the, the coach you have at that moment is not a bad coach. You know, you know who's great with this? George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre is a great example of someone who's constantly evolving. And you know what? His coach. Faraz Zahabi deserves a lot of credit. So the guy is an amazing coach, but also he has the great ego, I mean, a great, great attitude, humility to say, hey, go off and learn from Greg Jackson. Go off and learn from Freddie Roach. Go off and learn from the Canadian wrestling team. Go off and learn from Hensel Gracie or, you know, whatever. That's awesome, where your coach is really involved in you finding the answer from someone else. That's not a bad thing at all. You know, not, no coach has all the answers. Now, in my academy, I think I'm a pretty freaking good coach. You know, like, I mean, let's say it. But at the same time, you met Professor Ken. You know, uh, he came on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Professor Ken is a, like, a master striker. And I'm like, okay, you guys listen to him <laughs> because that'll make us all better. Yeah. Why not? And, and so I became, you know, very good partners and friends with him and he has his school and his guys train, you know, more grappling with me and we train more striking with him because it helps us all improve and get better. And, you know, um, and also he's, he's a fantastic instructor, coach, but you know, we needed to evolve. We needed to get to that next level. The, the, like the way the striking is evolving, you know, Professor Ken is on the cusp of that evolution, fusing different elements from, you know, the other day he's like, Hey, here's this boxing combination, but it kind of looks like Wing Chun, but it's kind of like this. So I took this thing here and here. And I'm like, Whoa. And then he does it on live real time with great fighters. And you're like, bah, bah, bah. And you're like, Oh my God, that's a game changer. I don't think anybody's seen that before and it's wow. going to be amazing. And you know, like that's, that's how you evolve when you, when you have a coach who's cutting edge, you surround yourself by the people who can help you change. Mm-hmm. Seek out that expert. And if you can't seek out the expert, you know, there's so much instructionals out there on YouTube or whatever. Damien Maya, go watch John Smith wrestling tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Damien Maya. <laughs> how to hit go. a single. You know, like, you know, or, you know, like, hey, he's got money. Um, hire Kale, go to Kale Sanders or hire Kale Sanderson to, you know, or, yeah. or actually clinch. You know, get a get a Greco Roman guy, you know, Eva Ivan Ivanova, you know, like one of these guys. Go to go to Russia and train with the Satyev brothers. You know, like that's what you should do. You know what? You should take a sabbatical and go to Russia and train with the Satyev brothers, who are, you know, the, the best wrestling brothers in, in wrestling history pretty much. That's you know, that's what he should do. You know, like go off and retool. You know, you know there was a, you know, was a fighter did talking about British fighters, you know the the Mohawk guy, what's his name? Um he does the commentary now. He's a striker. Ah, he lost to George St. Pierre. He's always had the red mohawk. British? British, yeah, yeah. British. Oh, man, what's his name? Ah, um, he's I'll, such I'll he's a co character. He comes out to the. Um, to, um, Say he's a co L- No, no, no. He has, a, he, has a, no, he has a mohawk, but he always comes out to um, London's Calling by. Uh, I don't know who sings Sex that. Sex Pistols? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, he does commentary now on the fights. Oh, what's his name? You know, he's, he's, he's like <laughs> one of the first. Uh, um, UFC guys. Anyway, but he was a striker, right? And so he said, hey, I'm going to take a year off and really, really improve my grappling. And he did. And he traveled, like, because I understand, he traveled, like, across the world to different academies. Dan Hardy? Dan Hardy. Yes, exactly. Dan Hardy. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. You are the man. We're a good team. Google, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he, he took a year off from fighting. And, and he spoke to Dana White about it. He's like, you know, hey, I need to take a year off. I need to learn more. And he did. And he came back much stronger. And, you know, that's sometimes you have to do that. And so, like I said, there's these, there's stagnation and there's false stagnation. And first, one, when you're learning new stuff, when you're really learning, and this is, I think, in the early part of your career, like white belt, blue belt, purple belt, you know, a little early in your career. If you're a Jiu Jitsu guy, if you're a Judo guy, black belt, um, first degree, um, second degree, kind of like there, you know, where you're, you're still, you're still learning. Um, you're still putting things together. Sometimes, like I said, the, 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 the younger guns in your gym start biting in your heels and they start tearing you up. And it feels like you're not getting better. Mm-hmm. That's generally not the case. You know, you're getting better. They're getting better too. And what happens is it's just an arms race and your, your body's getting ready to, to go. As long as you keep adding to your game and you keep, 
you know, moving forward. And, and what that is is a product of you improving is to kind of get confused a little, which feels like stagnation, but it's not. Then, like I said, then there's real stagnation. I think this happens when you're more of a mature fighter. And one, it's sort of like the old dog new tricks thing, like Bisping, where he's like, yeah, I've been doing this all my life, so don't tell me how to trick. You know, I had people tell me this, like, you know, yeah, you know, oh, I, I, I know I'm, I'm a boxer, pro boxer. I, I know how to strike. Um, you've never thrown a kick in your life. Mm, boxing is not striking. Boxing is part of striking. You've never thrown a kick. You've never thrown a, a shoulder punch in clinch or a knee or a foot stomp. So you, you know one element, but you're, you're closed minded, mm. you know, cause you're like, ah, I'm like, so that's hard to deal with, right? Closed minded ego. And that's usually the more mature guy, you know, um, been doing his thing all of them and kind of hard to, you know, old dog new tricks thing. But then the other one is, you know, sometimes you, you, you hit a problem and you don't have the answer and you keep just getting wrecked in a position. Man, you gotta be Sherlock Holmes and that's it. And then find the people, find, you're either the Sherlock Holmes or you find the Sherlock Holmes and you go and you fix that problem, whether it's DVDs, whether it's going to another instructor, asking your instructor, but you, you leverage the knowledge around you. Right now, there's so much knowledge on YouTube and so much good knowledge too. Yeah. Um, but I would say, you know, that would be a more mature level guy, you know, like mm. white belt should not be surfing YouTube and saying, Hey, I just learned this awesome, <laughs> like, you know, backflip flying guard bone, bone bubble. I'm a professional and, fighter now. Yeah, right. Exactly. YouTube video. You know, but, but, uh, yeah. but, but you have to be Sherlock Holmes and you yeah. have to, but it took me – for the move that, that I had trouble with, it took me two years to figure out an answer. Every day, training every day. And, of course, each day I was getting better. But it took me two years of being Sherlock Holmes and just knowing every single thing about that position and asking different people, different people what their take was on mm-hmm. and, and open mind and saying, what do you say about this? What is this? And yeah. a lot of times I would get conflicting advice. Like one guy would say this and one guy would say – and neither of them were wrong. They're just saying what works for them. Yeah. You know? But it's you what find out – Yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta be Sherlock Holmes. So if you're if – you're, let's say you're a black belt and you're, you're, you're kind of feeling stagnate and uh, yeah. you're not growing, mm-hmm. maybe something – and it's, maybe it can be really – you know, depressing. Absolutely, um, and that's when people quit too. Yeah, I think that's when they quit. Maybe a good a good way to get around it is maybe pretend like you're a white belt and just join another gym and go beat people up. <laughs> no, but you you, <laughs> you make a joke, you make a joke, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. Like, how do you get over that? No, like, but you, you should have that? the white belt mentality. You know, okay. putting on the black belt doesn't mean yeah, right. But it doesn't mean you know everything. You know, like you don't you, you know. Higa Machado said to someone, I, I didn't get my black belt under him, but he said it to a friend of mine who got his black belt under Higa, and and he told me, and I I, I take that hard. It's like. Now you're black, but you don't have to beat everybody. You, it's okay to be tapped. You don't have to know everything. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be the man every single moment. You're still a student. You're still in your journey. You know what? Shodan, that's the way they say black belt, first degree in, in Japanese. Shodan means first step. So, you know, sometimes when you, you feel like you should, you know, um, uh, be the, the man with all the answers, and you're not. You're not the man with all the answers. Um, you may have a lot of answers, but there's always something you don't know. And, um, and that's okay. And you have to be okay with that. And, uh, and, and keep searching, keep looking, keep, keep driving forward, keep evolving, and it's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, um, have patience with yourself too. But I, I think, you know, when people strive here is when they're a little bit obsessive. So first, identify where you're, where you're getting killed. Okay. Damien Maya. Okay. His hands suck and you can't finish your shots. Okay. Write, write this down, Damien Maya. <laughs> you know, no, and then it's not trash on Damien Maya. I love Damien Maya. He's, he's an idol of mine too, you know, so, but he's, he's just be objective here. You know, mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I, on my podcast, on this podcast, I mentioned a certain fighter. He's a great guy and he's a great fighter, but I was a little critical of him. And I ran into him the other day. Uh-oh. And you know what? He was not happy. <laughs> so I was like, ah, shoot. <laughs> I guess I lost a friend there. But you know, it's like, um, it's, it's not, um, it's not meant to put someone down, but being objective, and this is important, being objective and saying, hey, look, I have this problems. Now, who can help me with this? Okay. Now, let me like, – first, you know, YouTube, instructors, whatever, but then maybe take a trip, you know, and do a wrestling camp. Like I, um, my friend Brian Peterson runs an amazing wrestling camp, um, and I, I, one of my students, I, I said, you should go there because this guy will really help you with the wrestling. He did not He had a great time. Um, just uh, – um, you know, that's what you have to do. You have to, you have to, you know, go off and ask people questions and learn from them. And, and, but first isolate the pop problem, be a little obsessive and be Sherlock Holmes and really, really, really take your time to, to dissect it. And you know what else is important? And I'll tell you, you know, G, uh, my student has a, his title fight coming up this weekend. 
It's pretty amazing. And one of the one of the reasons Jeeves gets great is because he has an in gym rival, and this in gym rival is named Marlon. And Marlon is great too, and they are great together, and they don't want to hurt each other at all. They're great friends, but at the same time. They are pushing each other like cats mm-hmm. and dogs fighting. And that's great because it becomes an arm race and it becomes a positive, a virtuous cycle of improvement where you don't stagnate. You don't see it as stagnation. You see it as, you know, like the Soviet Union in America. I mean, that's not a really good thing, <laughs> but, but you know, okay, I get 10 more nuclear weapons. You get 10 more nuclear and pop, 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 and you keep, and that's what MMA is today, yeah. which is why the techniques in MMA are constantly evolving because there's such an arms race. Now you have to create that arms race. In your in your own little circle, find someone who really who really tests you in that element. So you're like, okay, I suck at half guard, so I'm gonna get the world's best half guard killer in my gym. You know, the half guard killer in my gym, and I'm gonna play half guard on him all day, every day, anytime I can. So he's the best guy at killing half guard. Guess what? I'm gonna go there, and each time I do it, I'm gonna film it, and I'm gonna see how the crap how I got my crap kicked out of it, and I'm gonna analyze it, and also ask my instructor what did I do wrong here, what did I do wrong there. And then I'll go off and maybe buy a half guard instructional or something like that and really try to think about what to do. Mm-hmm. You know, but you have to marshal the resources at your disposal, which means, you know, um, you have, if you're training, you probably have a, a, a really in- skilled instructor. Ask him and your senior students, ask them. Maybe you go off and do a seminar somewhere, ask this guy, take a private with someone else. But you have to marshal those resources around you. And like I said, be Sherlock Holmes. And just figure it out. And it like for me, it took two years. But I did. And now I won't say I'm unsubmittable in that position. I'm not. Mm-hmm. Definitely not. But it's hard. It's really yeah. hard. Where the other – before, I would just be like, bleh, die. You know, <laughs> bleh. You know, it was just terrible. So I, it took me two years of constant research. Every single day I was working it. And it was hard. But I did. And you know what? It was pretty freaking cool when I got it. You know, it was like yeah. a real sense of achievement. So. Definitely. These moments of stagnation don't, you know, it, reframing, there's um, that cognitive, um, what's it called? Mind reframing, you know, um, uh, what's it called? You know, when they say, you know, psych- psychological re- reframing, yeah. you know, don't say, oh, this is a, cha- this is a, you know, stagnation. Say, this is a challenge. This is where I earn my stripes mm-hmm. as a fighter. This is my, this is, this is the wall in front of me. I'm going to freaking climb this wall. Yeah. And then you, you, you reframe, you don't feel like, you know, you're going to quit or you're, you know, blah, you know, like I suck and you don't go home and eat a box of bonbons and, <laughs> you know, like just depressed. Um, the other thing is like sometimes with stagnation, I'm going through this right now, I'm injured. I can't train a hundred percent. So sometimes you feel like you're stagnating. What you do is you work new games. Like right now, my back is injured and I have a groin tear and a shoulder injury. So you know what? I'm really researching wrist locks because that's what I can do now. And you know what? I'm coming up with some really awesome, really cool stuff. So you just do what you can do. Yeah. And that keeps it interesting and fresh. And, you know, um, a friend of mine came by the other day and he's a really amazing black belt. And I caught him way off guard with this wrist lock that I kind of invented. And he's like, what the freaking hell was that? I'm like, yeah, I just invented this. This is really cool. He's like, oh, my God, that's so cool. And that's what I did is while it the rat lock? I, you know, it, it should be the rat trap. Or, no, no, we're the- it, no, we already <laughs> had the rat trap. It should be the <laughs> – something like that. I don't know. I'll leave you to catch the name. But, okay. but, but, you know, like I'm injured. I'm not doing well. But I did not stagnate because I'm constantly looking for something that I can do. And at the end of the day, guys, if it's an intellectual game, if you're not using your brain, then, yes, you will for sure stagnate mm-hmm. and you'll quit, you know. Blue belt, purple belt, that's when you kind of feel that like, oh, 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 these guys are too tough for me. I'm going to quit. You know, like um, don't feel that. All you have to do is use your brain and be Sherlock Holmes. And that's that's kind of my take on those two kind of stagnation points. Yeah. You know, but have a good – at the end of the day, have a good rapport with your instructor because both sides, whether it's false stagnation or real stagnation, your instructor is going to be a really good touchstone for you to to deal with whatever you're feeling. You know, have a good communication with your mm-hmm. instructor. It's very important. And it goes without saying that the instructors at Radical MMA, if you're in New York City, are top-notch. So if you're looking for an instructor, <laughs> well, thank you. Please visit the Radical yes, MMA. Yeah. And you can you can you can uh, say that the, the the submissions that that I put on you are, are quite painful. I, I can attest to it. You personal can attest to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he knows what he's talking about. Well, he knows you know, what he's doing. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you know I appreciate that. And I you know I'm I'm I think I'm a pretty good instructor. There are a lot of guys uh, really good as well. Um, thing is, uh, 
you know, I'm very proud of what, what I've achieved and um, I really hope I can help people get better and, and make a positive impact on their lives. And I just do what I can do, you know, mm. and some people I can and some people find that they're, they're, they're better off with other instructors. And that's great. You know, like you got to find what instructor works for you. Yeah. And, and again, what instructor can help you follow, find, solve that problem at that moment. Like uh, this guy came to my academy. Oh, you know, we got to finish up. But the guy came to my academy just for a private. And I said, what are you having trouble with? And he's like, I'm having trouble with this position. I can't figure it out. And literally, it was something, the really basic thing that one of my instructors taught me a long time ago. I'm like, how about this? He's like, oh, my God, I've never seen that before. So sometimes basics for one guy is like a really advanced move for another guy. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. And I've had that happen to me. I'm like, the guy's like, I learned this when I was white belt. I'm like, what? I never saw that. Yeah, you know, so you you know, you know, look around and 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 observe the wider, you know, uh environment of technique and you you'll find an answer. Yeah. You know? The answer's out there. Yeah. Uh, what is it? The X Files? The truth is out the there. The truth is out there. Yes. The truth is okay, so yes, the answer to say the truth is out there. Mulder and Scully. Yeah. I said Sherlock Holmes, we should be Mulder and Scully. <laughs> I don't want to. You know, be nobody's going to know who those people are anymore. Oh, no, but the show uh, coming back, they came back, they? right? Yeah, yeah it came back. People right? know that yeah. show. Uh, we got to talk about the elephant in the room before we wrap up. Uh, the elephant this, in the room? The elephant in the room. What? I don't see an elephant. It's over there. Uh, oh, my the God. The got much bigger. Uh, <laughs> we got a celebrity in the room with us. Who? Mr. Rene Dreyfus. Oh, oh, oh. He's on the internet. <laughs> Doing videos for BuzzFeed. Oh right, right. So that was a that was a fun lark. Yeah, when yeah. did that happen? Why why didn't you not mention that ever? Was it like a non disclosure or something? No, no. I just didn't think it was a big deal. It's uh, a big deal. Another, oh well, thank you. Um, okay, so yeah, so these uh, BuzzFeed guys contacted me. Um, I think um, I think maybe they had uh, contact with the podcast because we talked about you know movie fighting. Yeah. And you know the, the difference of real fighting, and so I think maybe it was that, or maybe they just found me as a because I'm on, you know, I'm known as a martial arts instructor, and they said, "Hey, would you be interested in, in giving your uh, two cents on on uh, on movie martial arts and real martial arts?" And, yeah. and and I've done two spots. There's another stop spot coming it's out. Coming out. Great. Yeah, the one coming out is actually really funny. Is um, I judge clips of superheroes fighting and to judge the reality oh. of like Black Panther and, and it's cool because Black Panther does a triangle choke in one of the fights and, um, Captain America does, um, some, some good jiu jitsu too, some good yeah. Muay Thai. I like when you talk about, um, James Bond with, uh, Daniel Craig. Yeah. And how yeah. it was really brutal and, uh, was, yeah, yeah. That was a good fight scene. You know, that was like kind of a turning point where, um, and I think we talked about this on the fight cast where it was like that movie kind of Jason Bourne and, and Casino Royale were kind of like, Ushered in a new way of doing choreography that was more, more real yeah. than than like kung fancy, fu fake, fancy, kung, yeah, fancy yeah. stuff, you know. Very cool. But um, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun, yeah. and uh, and they were actually doing another spot coming up, and then they said that in the future it went so well, it was really popular too, which was cool. It was. Um, you know, it's funny they came in, and I I, I had been choked though, like. 700 <laughs> times before that because I was doing privates and then and so my wife is like this with that fight scene you know it was like <laughs> they're like maybe you should drink some more water I'm like I'm sorry okay. yeah. so the next one I do I'm not going to schedule six privates in a row before that <laughs> no, no jokes. <laughs> no, yeah. that's awesome uh, yeah. yeah but it was a lot of fun and the guys at BuzzFeed were fantastic I, you know I didn't know what to expect I you know I didn't really know that much about BuzzFeed so uh, but I know now that well, the kids love it the kids love the it kids today. Love the kids, it. Well, millions yeah. of views on Renee's. But video. I, did you? What did you think? Did you enjoy it? I did. Yeah, yeah. I watched it a couple times. Cool. Oh, well, like let me know what you think of the, the second one. They're coming out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxiously awaiting. Yeah, yeah. It should be fun. So, um, no, it was it was nice, and I, I, you know, I didn't do it for any money or anything like that. It just they came to me, and I thought it was it was like a. I had a lunch break, and I'm like, no, this sounds like fun. So I did it, and the guys were really anything? cool. They didn't give you no, like no, a no, no, coffee or anything. Not even a coffee. No, I was drinking energy drink, so it was fine. I don't drink too much coffee. Um. So that's that's it. What, what fights are you looking forward to? You looking for the? I'm looking forward to going to sleep. <laughs> I cannot wait for the <laughs> um, uh, your favorite fighter, um, Daniel Cormier versus Stipe. Oh Magic. yes. That's oh it. yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah. That's gonna be. Do we, get, we have, did we make a bet on that one? We will. Oh yeah. Oh, Conor McGregor not in jail yet. Not in jail. Conor yeah, McGregor yeah. watch. But but he had um. Didn't he have like some court appearance recently? I mean, not in no, no, recent not, weeks, no, but. No. Um, I, he's not going to jail. No, I think you're right. I think I lost this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess real quick, I'm going with Stipe. You're going with Stipe? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll be on the same side of this one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Maybe we can find something else to bet about. Like, uh, is it a knockout or a decision? Decision, I think. Uh, I think it's. I think that, yeah, they'll be technical. I don't yeah. think he's going to go for a haymaker or something. He's not going to make a mistake. 
than go. No, and you know, it, it's, it's again, Daniel Cormier is an amazing fighter. And actually, I'm a real fan of him. I think he's a great representative of the sport. And I'm watching him coach on The Ultimate Fighter now. You can oh, tell he's a really good coach. Show? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, because I, I don't like the drama. the drama. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I like to see how they coach. And, you know, he dealt with a couple um, problem fighters who didn't didn't get a good vibe from like like they weren't really listening to his coaching yeah. and the way he dealt with it was really cool and you know he's funny and he he, he like trash talks a little bit but in a way that's not like disrespectful it's just it's just funny talk mm-hmm. and and he's he's a he's just a good representative of the sport but at the same time you know he does have problems in his striking movement and and that's an, that's what's going to hold him back and he wants to take that championship if or if he wants to be John Jones he has to fix the problem. We talked about it many times. Is he's a little jerky in his striking, and yeah. um, he's good though. I mean, he's good. It's just, but to be the best of the best of the best, you can't have those problems. Yeah. And what I would say to him is this: you know, go train with Demetrius Johnson or like TJ, like someone really light who just moves like slick and watch yeah. them. You know, like they don't train with the heavyweights because heavyweights are like a little blah, you know? And go with someone really light and really fast. And I've been doing this with G lately too. G's a big guy, but I want to move like a little guy. So I have him move around with, we have this guy, um, Jeff, and Jeff is 125 pounds and G has to chase him. <laughs> and Je- Je- Jeff is like, like, like a, you know, like a mouse running around. Like the scene from Rocky, he's chasing around. Yeah, chasing the chicken. Well, okay, Jeff should be. Yeah, Jeff, you're the chicken. <laughs> you listen to this podcast, he's gonna get pissed off. <laughs> no, but you know, like we want to make him get, be faster. So you know, that's one answer. And I think, I think, you know, for Damien Cormier to avoid that striking stagnation, I wouldn't call it stagnation, but but the technical error that he's mm-hmm. making is to do that. So you know, again, it comes back to what we were saying, but. Um, I, I I guess we're on the same side of this one, so we have to we have to find another yeah. thing to bet. Is on. It, we'll figure it out. We'll find something to bet on because I know you want to hurt me again. Uh, <laughs> no, the next bet will you have to come take class. I can't afford you. No, no, just a free class. I would do. That. I'm going to lose the bet on purpose. Then uh, I'm going to bet <laughs> that uh, Daniel Cormier is not going to eat chicken that day. <laughs> no, I have to agree with you. I don't think Daniel Cormier is going to take it. You know, no, he, he. I don't think he's gonna. Do All, right. All, right. All right, but it'd be nice if he did. It'd be kind of cool. But I, I'm fans of both of them. They're both yeah. really cool. Good guys. guys. All right, yeah. looking forward to the next. Thanks one. everybody for coming to listen. Uh, share, subscribe, review, rate, and uh, we'll see you next week. Hopefully, yes. No time off. All right. No rest for the wicked. <laughs>